Hi, my name is Steve Walker from Promise Money. Today I'm going to talk about um, commercial property if you are an owner occupier. If your business wants to buy or currently owns and wants to remortgage commercial property. And just tell you what's going on right now, we are immediately post um, trust and Rishi Sunak has just got in. So the market is in turmoil. So a lot of what I'm going to tell you now relates to the market right now. So um, if you're watching this months and months later and you found it on YouTube or wherever, please go to Promise Money YouTube or Promise Money uh, our website and you, you might, you'll probably find something that's more up to date than this one. So this is just post trust, Rishi, Rishi's just in. Okay, so let's talk about own, owner occupied uh, and why that's more attractive to the high street lenders because that's important to you as a business owner. The high street lenders aren't terribly interested generally in investment property. They are interested in well-run businesses. And it's our job to demonstrate to a lender that the, the business is well run, uh, that it's got good prospects for the future, uh, and that it can afford the proposed loan. So I want to just talk about affordability to start with because that's really, really important. Um, at the moment, we're, we're seeing rates of around about 2.2, uh, maybe 2%, but 2.2 to 3.5 plus base. That's from the high street lenders, okay? Fixed rates, however, have gone through the roof. Now, the reason fixed rates have gone through the roof is because um, lenders rely on what's called swap rates. Swap rates rely on the long-term money market and, where, uh, and what the cost of money is going to be in the future. And because of the uncertainty we've had, especially over the last month or so, swap rates have gone through the roof. So if right now you're trying to get a residential mortgage or any sort of mortgage on a fixed rate, the rates are disproportionately high. To give you an example, when when um, base rates uh, were around about, I don't know, well, if you, t if you take a, a deal at 2.2% plus base, which would have got you to around about 5% a little while back, um, fixed rates were just a fraction fraction more that, ran, maybe around about six and a half, something like that. Um, base rate hasn't altered greatly over the last um, month or so, but, the fixed rates have gone up massively. So you're looking now, even high street lenders quoting fixed rates on commercial finance at over 8%. Specialist lenders, over 8%, okay? So fixed rates are disproportionately high. So the first thing you might want to think about is, well, whereas previously I've been attracted to a fixed rate, I might actually now be more attracted to a variable rate because fixed rates are overpriced. So I can build in my, build in my own margin. Um, because of where you think that rates might go in the future. Having said that, there's a possibility now that, that, that we hope there's a bit more stability in the market that fixed rates might come down because long-term swaps will come down. So um, there's probably a short-term window for, for fixed rates to reduce a little bit. Having said that, what's going to happen to base rates with inflation? Base rates could go up. So don't don't rely on that and don't sit and wait for too long because you might want to be get, it might make good sense to get into a fixed rate right now. Now the impact of rates, that affects affordability. If the interest rate goes up, the loan becomes less, uh, becomes more expensive. Therefore, the lenders have to factor in a greater cost into their affordability calculation. So I just want to talk briefly about how they assess affordability. And this varies massively between your high street lenders and your specialist lenders. So I'll make a broad assumption in most cases, you want to try and get into a high street lender because their rates generally will be lower, but that's not always the case. We've got specialists undercutting high streets at the moment. Um, but as a broad brush you know, um, idea, that's what you want to try and do. So let's take, let's take a scenario that you're, you've got a loan repayment that you're looking to pay and it's a thousand pounds a month. Now you may well think that your business can afford a thousand pounds a month because uh, you've got that within your P&L, you've got that available to you. But what a lender's going to say is, well, yes, it may be a thousand pound a month, the repayment, but we're going to assume that that rate's going to go up. If it's a fixed rate, then they don't assume as much. But if you're on a variable rate, they're going to say, right, what happens if rates go up? So we're going to assume that's going to go up by two and a half, three and a half percent minimum. Um, now that means that your thousand pound a month could easily now be 1400 pounds a month. Okay, so they're going to assume that that's what you're going to be paying. But then they're going to add another factor to that. They're going to say, okay, well, that's fine. We've put a stress test in for interest rates going up, but we also need to put a buffer in to cover ourselves 
for whatever eventualities might happen. Um, that you have a vo uh, that, that you, you, your business takes a downturn or something like that. Um, now, high street lenders typically are going to say, we're going to take whatever that stressed repayment is and we're going to multiply that by a factor of 175% to give ourselves a 75% buffer. Okay, so you're paying a thousand, your stressed repayment, assuming rates might go up, could be 1400, but your high street lender says, we're going to work on 2100. Okay, so all of a sudden, the business which was showing perfectly enough profit to pay a thousand pound a month has, has got to now show double the profit to, to tick the boxes for a high street lender. So that's really, really important to know. And if, of course, rates go up, and we're finding this now, applications that were accepted some time ago where, lend, where borrowers didn't go ahead, they say, oh, we want to go ahead now. Well, that was then. Rates have now gone up, so lenders are now applying higher stress tests. Um, because rates could go up again. So it just throws everything out. So if you've got an offer on the table right now, it's probably a good idea to go for it or at, le or at least move forward with it so that you've locked it in with the lender and you're progressing with an application rather than it's just an indicative, this is what you could have because um, at some point in the future, that might not be there. So affordability and stress tests and debt service coverage, these are things the lenders look at and High Street will really, really want to cover their backs. They're also going to um, do these loans primarily, if not exclusively, on a capital and interest basis. So they'll work out um, the repayments on that loan and then that it might have been a thousand pounds is a capital interest repayment on your loan per month over 20 years. But they've stressed that up to 2,100. That's what you need to show. Let's go to the other end of the market, the specialist lenders. They might say, well, OK, well, we're going to allow you to have it on an interest only basis. So your repayment, instead of being a thousand pounds a month, is going to be six hundred and fifty pounds a month or six hundred pounds a month. We're going to apply a stress, a stress rate uh, factor to that, but it's not as high as the high street. And we're going to apply a debt service coverage, but it won't be one hundred and seventy five percent. It'll be typically between one hundred and twenty five and one hundred and forty five percent. So that means with a specialist lender, you can probably work on a thousand pound a month, whereas a high street is looking for 2,100. Okay, so it comes back down to how strong are your accounts? How well is the business performing? And, what, and, and how we, can we present that to a lender in such a way they're gonna say, yes, we'll tick that box. So let's talk about your accounts uh, for a moment. So um, you're, you're going to have uh, a, a net profit, but lenders don't necessarily work on the net profit. They'll adjust that, and some of it they'll adjust in your favour. So uh, if there's depreciation, well, we can generally add that back in. If you've already got a mortgage at the moment, or you're paying rent at the moment, the cost of that, because you're going to be remortgaging or buying property to trade from, we can add that back in. Um, your profit pre-tax, we're going to work on that, not after tax, so we can add the tax back in. So there's various things that we can add back in. And also, um, if you've got some uh, one-off costs, some significant costs which aren't going to exist going forward, uh, we can add those back in. You might have spent £50,000 on um, buying some equipment. It could have been a one-off expenditure and you said, we'll take a, hit in, take a hit this year. We can add that back in. You might have refurbished the property. Potentially, we can add that back in. You might have changed the way you work. Uh, and those costs that were in there pre previously, we can add those back in. So first of all, we've got to get an understanding of that and work out what we can add back and what we can't. But then there's things that you've got to watch out for that we might need to take out of your profit to arrive at that figure that the lender will use. For example, um, your business might have, um, might have uh, used the furlough scheme and your profits might have a chunk of income in there which came from the government. Well, that's not going to be there going forward. So the lender's going to say, well, ignore that. That's going to reduce your profit. That's what we're going to work on going forward. Uh, you might have had some grants. They're going to ignore that as well. So there's certain things that they might take out. You might have a bounce back loan. OK, you've got a bounce back loan. That's, an, that's another commitment. We've got to take that into consideration. Um, so they'll factor that into the affordability as well. So there's lots that needs to go on looking, looking at your accounts. And the key thing is we need those accounts to demonstrate that your business is doing really, really well, or if, it, if, if there are some factors in there that we need to work with to get a grip, to get a grip with those. Um, now, it could be that you haven't had your latest accounts done yet, so all we've got to go on is a set of accounts which maybe do show some furlough income, do show uh, some grants. Um, so it's important 
that we get your latest set of accounts. So if you're about to have your accounts done, then um, get it get it done. You haven't got to necessarily submit them, but let's let's have a look at them. Um, if you haven't got to that stage yet, but you use an, an internal accounting system like uh, Sage or Zero, then let's get an export from that and let's have a look at what those look like because that's going to give us a really good feel for where it's going, and um, and we can put together the best possible proposition for you. And that's what our job as a broker is to do: is to take all of the facts and say, right, how do we present this so it's looking as good as it can possibly be? to any lender so we can go out to a wider market and attract the best lenders, the most competitive lenders for you. Um, <clears throat> now there's another factor that we need to take into consideration which is often overlooked. Let's say you've got a really successful business, uh, it's a limited company um, and you, you make £100,000 profit a year but you take that, all of that out as a dividend, maybe on your own, maybe there could be multiple directors. If you strip all of that out as a dividend then it doesn't leave anything in there to support the debt. Similarly, if you're a sole trader, you may well um, show a good profit, but then you take it all as income. It leaves nothing in there to, to pay for the proposed mortgage that you're thinking of taking out. So we need to deal with that as well. And the way we deal with that is we'll look at your um, personal outgoings and uh, put forward a proposal to the lender to say, look, um, this director or this sole trader is taking this income out and why shouldn't they? It is theirs, but they don't need to because Here's their personal outgoings. Um, here's the income coming into the household. They may be taking out £100,000, but actually they, don't, they only need to take 20 because we've evidence that that's what they need to live on. So the other 80,000, we'll add that back in. So that's a, another part of the game of putting together the whole proposition. Um, and uh, so we'll ask for a document called an ALI, Assets, Liability, Income, income and Expenditure Statement, which will give us that sort of information. So <clears throat> we've now got to the bottom of your adjusted accounts or your EBITDA. Um, so what, what profit is available to support, support the borrowing? We've also got to look at what the business does and we've got to look at the type of property and make an assessment of which lenders are going to be up for this. Um, and generally speaking, you know, the, the, the lenders are, they're okay with most properties. There are some that they don't like. Churches, they don't like. Converted churches, no, they really don't like them. Petrol stations, they really don't like them at the moment. But most conventional retail, etc., etc., they're okay with. Um, retail and offices went through a bit of a bumpy patch during COVID um, for obvious reasons, but in most cases, lenders have got over that. Um, so we know your property, we know your business, we know about you, your credit history is important as well. Um, we've then got to put together a proposal for you. Now, <clears throat> that proposal has to be properly written down and put to a lender, as I say, to make it as easy as possible for them. So the more information that you can give to us or a lender at that point, um, the better it is. Remember, if you give information direct to a lender, you can't then take it back. They've got it. So um, it's best that we have a look at it first and we say, right, we can put together a whole proposal for you. Um, at the mo to, to, to summarise really, at the moment, the market for owner occupiers is good. It's unaffected really by what's going on apart from in terms of rates. So <coughs> there's plenty of appetite for, for well-run businesses, um, and, um, but you will pay more because the base rate has gone up a little bit and fixed rates are an awful lot higher. Should you wait and see what happens? I don't think so. I think uh, if there's something you want to do, do it now and see if you can afford it. Um, there's plenty of talk about interest rates going up again, which is going to be uh, probably brought about by the Bank of England increasing interest rates rather than swap rates, which affects long-term fixed rates. So um, I don't expect it to get better before it gets worse. In terms of loan-to-values that you can borrow, as an owner-occupier, you can borrow up to 75% um, of the value of the property that you're securing against. That's I wouldn't say that's typical. Specialist lenders, there's plenty of them doing that and some high street lenders, but some of the high street lenders are more cautious, so they're at 60-65%. But we're getting away 75%. If you're in the medical industry, i.e. you're a dentist or you're a doctor and you're buying a practice, uh, well 100% is available for those, including 100% of the goodwill. I ought to just mention goodwill. If, if you are buying a business, you just need to be aware of what you're buying. Uh, and a question to, to get to the bottom of in, in that scenario is, what's the value of the property that I am buying? And what's the value of the business? 
the goodwill of the business some lenders won't lend against. They'll lend against the bricks and mortar value of the property. So you need to understand that. Um, and uh, if you're going through an agent, they should have an idea because that somehow they would have come up with a valuation for the business of a whole. So bricks and mortar and goodwill are two different things. The classic for that is your bed and breakfast. You know, we've got a successful bed and breakfast business. Um, the building's worth 500,000 pounds, but the business is 750. Very often a lender will only lend against the 500, which means you need a bigger deposit. So um, I could talk for ages about all of the quirks, but I hope that's given you a flavour for what's going in the on in the market right now if you are an owner-occupier looking to buy property to move into or looking to expand. Um, if it's investment property, different rules apply, different appetites, and I've done another video on that, so check that out. So please go to our um, YouTube channel and subscribe and like our videos. We want more people to see them. Um, and of course, go to promisemoney.co.uk and you'll find uh, help guides under each section on the website there, which might, get, which might help you too. So thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Bye-bye.